Sure is good to be back in the house of the Lord and be back with you tonight. Uh, uh, been looking forward to this myself. Uh, glad that Brother Jim uh, was uh, willing to include me in the list of preachers he had for this revival because he's he sure got some good ones. Uh, but uh, if you got your Bibles with you, we're going to be reading now this twenty-second chapter of the Book of Genesis, and uh, I'm probably going to read more scripture than I usually read. <clears throat> but uh, you know, the Lord put this on my heart and. I think I preached on some of this oh, maybe a few years ago, and and uh, you know, I, as far as preachers go, I still consider myself a, a young preacher. And uh, you know, one one thing's for sure that uh, I may not be able to quote the Bible like Wandel Tony and 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 Brother Jesse, and and I may not know everything there is to know in this book, but I can tell you I know where to find it. And I can get back to it, and I can find my answers right here. And the only thing I have to do is devote a little time to looking for them. Uh, And if I can't find satisfaction myself, I know who to call (laughs) to to get those answers or just to talk for a little bit. But uh, you set much in prayer for us tonight. As as I thought I was settled on what I was going to preach, not real sure we everybody here that's a preacher knows it don't always work out the way you think it's going to but uh, uh we're going to start out preaching it and uh just see where the lord goes uh we're going to start in verse one it says uh and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt abraham and said unto him abraham he said behold here here i am and he said take now thy son thine only son isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of moriah And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and he saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come back again or come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and he went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here, here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? I want you to listen to this verse right here. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide Himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And they went both of them together. And they came into the place which God had told him. And there he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, uh, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out to him to heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing uh, thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Let's pray for a minute. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, oh Lord, we just ask you that you would just hide us behind the cross. Father, we know that there's a message here to be preached, Lord, and we know that we're nothing without You. And Lord, without You and the Holy Spirit, it's just nothing but words. But Father, we feel tonight uh, that somebody could get a blessing from this, Lord, and we just ask that You would let us preach it, uh, bring to remembrance the things that we've studied. Uh, Lord, we'll always never fail to give You the glory and the honor for everything. In Jesus' name, Amen. So the first thing I want to look at, uh, uh, the very first thing in this is we notice uh, uh, that Isaac uh, uh, was Abraham's promised son. Uh, Now if you want to go back uh, uh, a few chapters, uh, you'll find out uh, uh, that God had told Isaac, uh, He said, I'm going to give you a son. uh, Or told Abraham, Abraham said, uh, I have no offspring. Uh, uh, You know, basically he had nobody uh, uh, to carry on his lineage, uh, uh, his his bloodline. And, and he had people in his house and, and different things and he'd come with these scenarios and God said, no, uh, uh, that's not how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to give you a son uh, uh, from your loins, uh, a child of your own. Uh, but listen, as time had went on uh, and Sarah had came to, I, or to Abraham uh, and she had said, uh, oh, look, uh, uh, God 
God has withheld a child from me. So why don't you just take my handmaid, Hagar, and you can, you can lay with her, and maybe if she has a child, I can build my house up through that child, through her. But listen, you know what she did? She got right in there and she made a mess of things, didn't she? Because Hagar did have a child, and they called it Ishmael. And shortly after Ishmael was born, Sarah became pregnant with Isaac. Listen, God had promised him a child. All he had to do was hold on. Just hold on a little longer. Keep the faith. And know that God was not slack in His promise. But listen, what they had to do was get in there and try to fix it themselves. And you know that caused a 4,000 year mess that's still going on in the Middle East. Everybody's claims uh, uh, that they can't wait for there to be peace in the Middle East. Uh, well, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If there's ever peace in the Middle East, uh, I would make sure that all your affairs are in order uh, because this world's about to come to an end. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, that that's going to go on to the end of time. Yeah. <clears throat> but listen. You know, there's a, there's a song that this singer, Brother Clay, and I just love. Uh, he sings, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, so let it go. And in that song, he talks about this exact thing. Uh, he talks about people will come to God with their problems, uh, uh, with their broken hearts, uh, uh, with their trials and their tribulations. Uh, and he likens it to a child uh, uh, that brings a broken toy uh, uh, to their father uh, and says, can you fix this for me? And before the dad can even work on it, uh, uh, they jerk it away uh, and take off with it. Uh, uh, listen, the song goes on to talk about uh, how that we have to let it go uh, uh, when we ask God for something uh, and we say like we're just going to put it in your hands uh, we need to not pick it back up uh, we need to leave it lay uh, and let God deal with it uh, I've had something heavy on my heart all week uh, I've texted Brother Clay a few times we've talked uh, and I've prayed all week uh, uh, that God would settle it in my heart uh, and today He did uh, you know what uh, I let it lay uh, with God uh, I didn't quit praying about it uh, but I didn't pick it back up and try to fix it myself uh, I let God settle it with me and I told Brother Clay I felt better today than I have all week about it God knows what He's doing you can't outdo God <clears throat> but listen God had made this journey, or Abraham had made this journey with Isaac uh, uh, the whole time uh, knowing what he was going to go do uh, uh, with his promised son. Uh, uh, you know, you read in the Bible, a lot of times they prefer, uh, refer to him as his only son because he was the promised son of God. Uh, uh, Ishmael was something that him and Sarah had come up with on their own. But listen, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, that God had had tested or tempted uh, Abraham. Uh, I don't, he didn't tempt him, he tested him. Uh, uh, listen, he tested Abraham's faith. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk uh, about uh, uh, people being tempted uh, uh, with evil, that, that God would let something, uh, uh, you know, dangle a temptation in front of somebody uh, uh, that would draw them out of the church uh, uh, to test them. Can I tell you, uh, that's a lie straight from the belly of hell. Uh, can I tell you over in the book of James, uh, about the first chapter, the 13th verse, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that God can not be tempted with evil, neither will he tempt a man with evil. But people seem to, they just get them, them, them just them blurps of scripture and they hold on to them and they misinterpret them and they try to read into them what they want to read into them. Can I tell you, you don't read nothing into the scripture, you let God discern that scripture to you spiritually. But listen. We look down in, in verse 5. Now listen, that Abraham had the faith. Uh, he knew where they were going. You know what he told them? Uh, uh, he said, uh, if I could use my own words, uh, he said, y'all wait right here. Wait here, I'm going to be right back. Uh, uh, we're going to be right back. Uh, Abraham knew uh, uh, that because uh, uh, Isaac was his promised son, uh, uh, the Bible even says uh, uh, that the, God had told Abraham uh, uh, that through Isaac his seed would be. He promised him that his seed would be more numerous than the stars in heaven. 
Can I tell you something? Abraham, uh, I don't know that Abraham knew uh, uh, that God would, uh, would stay his hand uh, or that that ram would be caught in the thicket. Uh, uh, but I've heard many preachers preach over the years uh, uh, that Abraham had enough faith to know uh, that even if he came down with that knife uh, and took Isaac's life in obedience to God, uh, uh, that he would resurrect him on the spot uh, uh, because he had promised him uh, uh, that that son and his son through his, uh, through his son, his seed would be known. His name would carry on. Listen, uh, you can't do that uh, if you've sacrificed your only son. <clears throat> Listen, God made him a promise. You know, well, Abraham said, y'all wait right here, we're going to go take care of something. And we are going to be right back. He says right there, we will re- we'll come again to you. He didn't say, I will be back. He said, we will be back. He had a promise from God and he latched onto that promise from God. Uh, uh, you know sometimes, uh, and I know I've preached this before and I've probably preached it before here. Uh, uh, do you know a lot of times uh, us as Christians, uh, uh, we will rob ourselves uh, of the promises of God, of God's blessings uh, uh, because uh, uh, we get too busy uh, or maybe we get too stubborn. Uh, uh, can I tell you something that God has promised us? Uh, uh, that He will strengthen us in our time of need. Uh, uh, you know that God has promised uh, He will send a comfort to us uh, uh, when we need it, when we're downhearted. Uh, did I, do you know that God has promised us uh, that in everything that we do, uh, uh, He will be with us? Uh, uh, you know how to latch a hold of those promises? Ask for them. A lot of times uh, we'll come into church uh, and it'll be just a, just a Holy Ghost Spirit filled uh, uh, service. It's just uh, the blessings are flowing, the tears are running, uh, and somebody's had something that's been heavy on their heart uh, uh, for the longest time. Uh, uh, but I don't know, maybe due to pride, uh, uh, maybe due to just foolishness or stubbornness, uh, uh, we refuse to come to the altar uh, as a Christian because uh, uh, we're afraid that what somebody uh, sitting five rows back uh, uh, might think about why we came to the altar. Uh, uh, listen, can I tell you, if that's the thing that's in their mind or they need to pull a spot right up next to you and you need to start praying for them Amen. listen God is there for us in everything we do everything we need every aspect of our life uh, uh, God wants to be a part of it uh, uh, can I tell you uh, God's promise is real uh, uh, there's no problem too little for my God and there's no problem too big for him either it doesn't matter what it is in my life I thank God for it. You all have heard Brother Clay talk about the story about the alternator and how it fell into place and, and he, he jokes around about God fixes cars. Uh, uh, you know, I've been through that myself at home. Uh, uh, you know, doing certain things, uh, uh, doing some remodel work on the house or whatnot, and, and, and something will go uh, uh, just exactly perfect. Uh, I couldn't ask for it to go any better. Uh, uh, you know, I have to stop uh, and say, Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I knew you was a carpenter, but that's great. And you people and people do laugh and it is funny, but people don't take you serious. They think you must be joking. I'm not joking. I promise you, I'm not joking. Uh, everything in, in my day to day life, uh, uh, just the fact that I drove to work uh, uh, 43 miles one way uh, and the car got me there, I didn't get in an accident. Uh, I'm in good health. Uh, uh, number one, I've got that job to go to uh, uh, to feed my children and my wife uh, and keep a roof over our head uh, every day before I get out of that car I have to stop and say thank you Jesus uh, because I didn't deserve any of this but you're, he's, uh, he's faithful and loving enough and merciful enough uh, and just covers us in grace uh, uh, that he allows us to have these things <clears throat> listen I can remember another time where Old Moses had stopped at the holy place to go up and get the Ten Commandments, to go up and commune with God. And he said, y'all wait here. I'm going to be right back. Well, he was gone for a long time. What they considered was a long time. And they go to Aaron and they're like, oh my goodness. 
He's not coming back. He, he probably got killed up there. You know, whatever they would mumble and grumble. Uh, uh, you know what they did uh, then? Everybody knows the story uh, of how they gathered everything up and they talked Aaron in uh, to make him this golden calf. Uh, uh, they said, you need to make us an idol uh, that we can carry before us uh, and say that this is what done all these wonderful things. Uh, uh, listen, you know what happened? Uh, uh, when old Moses, or, uh, uh, Moses came down from the mountain uh, and he seen what was going on uh, and it said he was, uh, he was just outraged. He was just wrathful. Uh, and you know what uh, Aaron said? Uh, oh, they made me do it. You know, does that sound familiar? You know, that one, one thing... One pet peeve in my Christian life. Uh, uh, one phrase uh, I just absolutely cannot stand to hear come out of somebody's mouth uh, uh, that's supposed to be a Christian uh, is the devil made me do it. Uh, uh, can I tell you something, church? Uh, uh, that the devil cannot make you do anything uh, that you don't want to do. Uh, can I tell you that the devil's on your back? Uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, to rebuke him and he'll flee from you. Boy, I tell you, that just gets under my skin. The devil made me do it. No, you wanted to do it, and you're using the devil for an excuse. That's right. <clears throat> uh, listen. <clears throat> so old Abraham, he took the wood, he took the fire, he had the knife. Listen, he, uh, you know, he was had everything to make the sacrifice, but the sacrifice. Uh, and you know, you would think... Uh, uh, that at, at Isaac's age, uh, uh, you know, uh, he even questioned it. At Isaac's age, as as, uh, as grown as he was, old as he was, uh, uh, that you know, he must have been thinking uh, uh, the whole time there. Uh, uh, man, uh, did Dad forget something? Because we've got everything but the sacrifice. How are we going to offer a sacrifice without the sacrifice? You know, he had to be asking himself that. Uh, uh, you know, right up to the time uh, uh, that Abraham uh, had bound him and put him on the altar. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> listen, he was obedient to his father. Uh, he followed right along. Uh, he was bound and put on the altar. Uh, uh, can I ask you something this morning? Uh, has God asked you to do something at some point in your Christian life? Anything at all? Uh, is He asking you to do something now? Uh, is He dealing with your heart about doing something uh, and you keep telling yourself, uh, I can't do that. Uh, I can't do that. I'm not capable of doing that. Uh, I'm not qualified to do that. Uh, uh, can I tell you something? You're exactly right. Uh, uh, we are not capable of doing things God asks us on our own. Uh, we are not qualified to do the things that God asks us on our own. Uh, but, uh, Oscar told me when I was first called to preach and I said Oscar I'm not my dad I don't preach like my dad I'll never preach like my dad I, I just don't know if I can do this Oscar said you can do it because God doesn't call the qualified He qualifies the called He said submit yourself to the calling and let God work it out you know that's probably some of the best advice I ever got you know, God will never ask you to do something and then say, you're on your own. I've asked you to do this. I've led you to do this. Just go do it. If He asks you to do something, He'll make sure that you're equipped and capable to do what He's asked you to do. He'll open the doors. He'll be with you every step of the way. I know it's hard sometimes to accept that as a fact. But because it's scary, it really is. But God said He'd never leave us or forsake us. He's there with us all the time. We just have to call on Him when we need Him. <clears throat> but listen, I want to look in verse 7. <clears throat> it says, uh, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I. My son, he said, Behold, there is fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Uh, uh, can I ask you this morning, uh, uh, where is the lamb in your life? Uh, uh, can I ask you that this morning? I know everybody here, uh, uh, we're, we're all good Christian people, uh, uh, you know, we, so we profess to be. Uh, uh, can I ask you, is the lamb uh, in your life, uh, is it right out front? Uh, is it right where everybody can see it? Uh, is it first and foremost in everything you do? Uh, is it everything that you tell people about? Uh, is the lamb that what guides you and what leads you? <clears throat> or is the lamb just something that you bring out and march into church on Sunday and then put it away when service is over? Listen, 
A lot, of, a lot, a lot of people like that. A lot, a lot of people like that. And can I tell you, that's why the churches are emptying out and hell's filling up. Can I tell you that? I don't believe that we're doing a good enough job witnessing people anymore. I really don't. Uh, you know, Brother Clay and I talked about this on the way down. Uh, isn't it wonderful that I have a brother that we can get in a car driving to church somewhere and we talk about church on the way to church. It's the greatest thing ever. But can I tell you, we was talking about how a lot of people will throw their Bible in the car and that's where it sits till next Sunday morning. They don't get it out and read it. They don't study God's Word. I'm not trying to offend somebody, but I'm trying to encourage you. If that's you, I'm trying to encourage you uh, that you're never going to gain uh, uh, the blessings that God has in store for you if you don't open this book and study God's Word. <clears throat> All of us should. And I don't, probably none of us study it as much as we should, uh, uh, but you know, that's what it's there for, to study, to learn. Uh, <clears throat> but listen... The Bible tells us that, that God is not slack concerning His promises. You know, what He's promised us all this. He's promised us the blessings, the help, uh, and everything else. Uh, all we have to do is claim it. <clears throat> and I'm, I promise you I'm just about done. I know it's been a little bit here. <clears throat> but in verse 8, we look at that verse 8. He says that God will provide Himself a sacrifice. He'll provide Himself a lamb. Oh, uh, listen, uh, I know, uh, uh, we all know the story uh, about how, uh, how and why uh, uh, that Jesus became that ultimate sacrifice. Uh, uh, can I tell you that back in that day uh, uh, that people stopped uh, uh, giving sacrifices like they should. Uh, uh, you know, the God had instructed them in the covenant that they were supposed to give uh, uh, the very best of their livestock. Uh, uh, the very best was to be set aside for the sacrifice. Uh, uh, the very best grain uh, was to to be set aside for the sacrifice. Uh, uh, but listen, people had got to the point uh, uh, where they were given uh, animals that were lame, uh, that were no use to them, uh, uh, given them moldy grain uh, because they wanted the good grain for themselves. Uh, can I tell you, that's what's happening today. Uh, people are giving God their second best. Uh, they're giving God the second best part of their time. Uh, giving God the second best part of their attention. <clears throat> You know, but Jesus, Jesus became that sacrifice. He knew that this, that this was done, that God was not getting any pleasure in these sacrifices anymore. So He became that ultimate sacrifice. You know, I just, uh, I think we've quite, I've read some scripture the other day, just familiar scripture. It was, I'm just so glad of that scripture that says while we were yet sinners, He died for us. You know, I'm so glad uh, uh, that, that Jesus was willing uh, to come to this old nasty wicked world uh, and finish in the form of a man uh, and endure all the things that He endured uh, uh, to save somebody like me. Uh, uh, just an old wretched sinner. Uh, I didn't deserve anything. Uh, I couldn't buy anything. I couldn't warrant the blood grace uh, uh, that Jesus showed me. But I'm so glad He did. Brother Jim said, you know, he burned himself one time and he ain't done it since. My dad used to tell people, he said, you ever stick your finger in a lit match or get burnt in a campfire? Well, yeah. Well, why would you want to do that on purpose? You know, and people would just look at him. Dad would tell him, said, look, heaven's real and hell's hot. He said, that's just, that's not even a drop in the barrel to what hell's going to be like. Uh, you know, people out there now, they live in this culture today to where hell's going to be a big party. Uh, well, I can promise you that's not. I mean, I, you, and you can't change their mind sometimes. <clears throat> They'll tell you, I'm number one, I don't believe in hell, but if there is a hell, it's just going to be a big party. I'll be there with all my friends. Well, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. The Bible says that there'll be weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth that it's a lake of fire, that it's painful where the worm dieth not. Boy, it don't sound like a party to me. It really don't. <clears throat> you know, and I try to tell people, you know, that, that I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to be honest with you because if I'm not honest with you, who's going to be? You know, <clears throat> I believe that that's our duty. <clears throat> but I'm so glad for the last guy. When Jesus ascended, He told him, He said, wait here. I will be back. And he left in his instruction manual. Uh, listen, I'm so glad that when Jesus went away, he said that he was going away to prepare a place for us. That where he is, we can be also. But he also said that if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. 
You know, isn't that a wonderful thought to know <clears throat> that we have all these promises waiting on the other side if we just keep the faith and stay on this path? But can I also tell you, we need to take the attitude uh, these days that uh, <clears throat> we just need to take everybody with us that we can. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to heaven, I want to take everybody I can. And the only way we can do that is by witnessing and getting people to give their lives to Christ, to, uh, to surrender. Uh, you know, we was talking a little bit on the way. <clears throat> you know, uh, we need to support the new converts. You know, it's, it's hard enough to get somebody to come to the altar and get saved these days. And when somebody does, why well, they ought to have a whole list of phone numbers of people in the church that they can call. And, and maybe the, the church, we need to get their number and just reach out to them. Uh, uh, you know, in the middle of the week, I, I hadn't talked to you in a couple days. How you doing, brothers, sisters, everything all right? Uh, you know, questions, can I answer anything for you? You know, because not everybody was brought up in this way. Uh, uh, not everybody these days was brought up in church. Uh, uh, people that are getting saved probably have a whole lot more questions than answers. Uh, and it, they have to be on the, on the milk of the Word before they get on the meat. Uh, uh, they have to be helped and guided along. <clears throat> we need to support them the best that we can. And pray for them all we can. Oh, uh, that they would stay strong. Uh, you know, heaven help us. Uh, uh, not to be the one uh, that would hug their neck at the altar when they get saved uh, and then turn around a week later and tell someone, I don't give them a year. <clears throat> now listen, that happens. It sure happens. You know, where people are, it's almost like they're rooting for them to fail instead of trying to help them succeed. You know, a lot of people that weren't brought up in church don't understand. If you make a mistake, that's not the end of it. Everybody makes mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes. i preached it many, many times. I'm glad I serve a God of third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh chances because I'm going to need them all and more before I leave this world. I'm, I'm full of mistakes. Even the Apostle Paul said he died out to sin daily. <clears throat> but a lot of people don't understand that. Just the simple things that we were all brought up in church to know, they don't understand. I hope I've encouraged you tonight in some way or... <clears throat> Hopefully, it didn't offend anybody, but you know we're never going to apologize for the Word of God. Uh, we're just going to preach what He gives us, and and uh, we're just going to leave it leave it lay. Um, we can stand across the building tonight. I don't need a song or anything. I just uh, I never want to st uh, stop uh, end a service without giving somebody the opportunity to pray. With every head bowed across the building tonight, <clears throat> if God's been dealing with you about something, dealing with your heart, well, we would encourage you to come this evening and let the church pray with you and pray for you. You know, I can't think of a better place to leave my troubles and my burdens than right here. Right here at the altar. As we tarry just for a minute, we're not going to keep you for very long.